may not be a surprise to you, but I like to talk politics a lot. And one of my favorite things to do is to uh, talk about politics to someone that I'm just beginning to know and not tell them exactly where I stand on the political spectrum. Just tell my ideas. Just say how I think society should work. And invariably, they can tell I'm not a Republican, you know, because I'm not a you know, psychopath, but they'll say, so yeah, you know, I'm an Indiana conservative state. Like, yeah, TJ, uh, I can tell you're a lib, but I'm glad you're not one of those like crazy far left liberals we have in Congress. And I have to say, listen, I'm, I'm further left than any liberal you can find in Congress, any of them. I, I mean, compared to me, like Nancy Pelosi might as well be Barry Goldwater. I, I'm way further left than those people. Like, no, no, you're, you're a sensible lib. You're, 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 you're kind of a, you know, a moderate, a centrist. Really. So, no, I'm, I dropped the bomb. I'm literally a communist. Literally a communist. Not hyperbolically a communist. Not uh, exaggeratingly a communist. I'm actually a communist. And what does it say that everything I've been saying all this time kind of makes sense to you? And that it doesn't seem insane? What does that say that what people have been saying about communism your entire life? It's, it's pretty fun to do. So this TikToker by the name of Power is Taken, Not Given makes a very excellent point, which touches on one of the most frustrating realities about American politics. And that is the fact that the people that work in the media and the pundits, by and large, have one view of moderate that is fundamentally different than most Americans. Because what a lot of people would label as moderate is halfway between the Republicans and the Democrats. But they also fail to connect that to the fact that most people in the United States think that both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are fundamentally failing right Right now to meet anybody's material needs. So what is moderate then? Well the harsh reality is, is I would make the argument that moderate doesn't really exist, at least in the context of politics. I mean there's centrism, but centrism is really just doing apologetics for the right wing and claiming that you're just being neutral or objective. It literally just does nothing but carry water for fascists. The reality is, is for working class people in the United States of America, starting from a position of communism is actually where you're going to meet the most ground for working class folks. Now in order to go further, we have to have a definition of communism and socialism because this is absolutely critically important. Communism is a moneyless, classless society. The most ready example that Americans might have as a, an example of a fully communist society would be something like Star Trek. But socialism socialism is the process of bringing about communism. That's why thinkers like Karl Marx wrote about socialism and communism, because socialism is the revolutionary process that brings about communism. Now I have to add one more detail to this. Defining what is a socialist state versus a capitalist state, a socialist would define based off of the dictatorship of the proletariat, which is to say that working class people are the people who through democratic systems systems are fundamentally in control of the economy. It doesn't mean that there's no capitalists whatsoever, but it does mean that the games capitalists play with each other are always subservient to the will of the people, which I think we can understand doesn't exist in the United States. Capitalists in the United States are pretty free to flout the law and very often make the law. And if we understand this, then we can understand exactly why communists would sound moderate to most American voters. The reality is, is that socialism is both obvious and necessary. Obvious in the sense that when we see homeless people on the streets, we know that the obvious solution is to give them housing. When we see people going bankrupt from medical bills, we see that the obvious solution is to give people health care. And we also see that any means testing system to make sure that the right people are getting access to housing and health care would do nothing other than deny people who would need housing, deny people who would need health care, and make the system far less efficient, more complicated, and ultimately worse in every conceivable way. Less people get health care. The people who do get health care, it's a much more miserable process. And ultimately, at the end of the day, is usually far more expensive. And this is exactly why liberal solutions fundamentally crumble with any type of public scrutiny. It's one of the reasons why liberal solutions are seen as more extreme. They seem more invasive because there's more paperwork, more bureaucracy, more of these systems in place to deny people 
coverage, and care. Whereas socialist solutions that are built off the philosophy of from each according to their ability to each according to their need seem pretty straightforward thing. But their straightforwardness is also an avenue of attack that liberals usually love at the left. They'll usually say, oh no, that's such a simple idea. Clearly you don't understand how the real world works because they think that everything needs to be overly complicated. But it really doesn't need to be that complicated. Like for example, in Libya, under Gaddafi, they had a big problem with a lack of affordable housing. So what Gaddafi did is Gaddafi just said, okay, well, if there's any housing that's empty, homeless people can just move in. And that's exactly what happened. And it turns out that Gaddafi effectively ended homelessness overnight. Those policies can work. They have worked. They also, coincidentally, are one of the reasons why the United States and NATO decided to intervene and get rid of Gaddafi in Libya. Because, you know, you can't have people just getting free housing. But that's the thing. Policies like this have been implemented around the world. Land reform programs have been used around the world to take ownership of apartment buildings and give them to the tenants to form cooperatives so that that way their rent is not based off of making a profit for one guy, but instead just goes to pay for the maintenance cost of their building. And you'll see that in a lot of socialist countries. They have specific land management programs that are designed to make sure that the cost of housing remains stable that housing is not treated as a commodity, but it's treated more like a public utility. And these are the types of things that seem pretty reasonable. I mean, just ask most working class people and they'll tell you. They will on one hand say that it's pretty miserable to have to pay property taxes on your single permanent place of residence. But they will also tell you that they're totally fine taxing people's second, third, fourth houses. We understand that housing is a necessity to live. And we also understand that it's pretty mean to tax some Thing that somebody needs to live. But we also recognize that there are some people that have an extreme amount of extra and they can afford to pay a little bit more in taxes. And we also know that there are some actors within the economy that are so malicious, that are so greedy, that fundamentally the only rational thing to do is to take away the enterprise that they have and to convert it into something that does serve the public good. That is why landlords, for example, especially greedy slum lords who don't maintain their property, under land reform programs that have been done around the world have had their properties taken away from them and very often the state even pays them to buy away their building to convert it into housing cooperatives or public housing to guarantee housing because here's the thing most Americans agree that housing should be a human right. But if we start from that position, then we have to either go with the obvious answers or we have to go with the ridiculous answers. Both the Democrats and the Republicans want to go with the ridiculous answers. But communists want to go with the obvious answers. Does it make sense that hedge funds are allowed to buy up essentially entire cities of apartments? No, of course it doesn't. And I don't think most people would have a problem with not allowing hedge funds to own all of the housing. So in a sense, a policy like that is fundamentally obvious. But it's never going to happen when you have the Democrats and Republicans both taking money from the real estate lobby. We are told scary stories about socialist countries our entire lives. But when you start to look into them, you start to realize that a lot of the evil, terrible things that these socialist leaders did very often are the exact things that most Americans want. Fidel Castro was painted as some sort of evil dictator because he took housing and land away from landlords and plantation owners and he gave it to the farmers and the tenants. Oh no, that's so evil of him. But I think we all can understand why most people would be fine with that. Especially since before Castro, they were operating under an extreme right-wing dictatorship that literally worked with the mafia to exploit the population. So when you start to realize these things, that the things that are supposed to make these socialist countries so scary and evil are actually some of the best things that they've done, then we can start to recognize that maybe socialism shouldn't be such a scary word.